So I would like to thank the organizer giving me this opportunity to share some information. I also thank the chair for the introduction. So uh, today uh, I'm going to talk about several visualization techniques we have developed and I hope this could be uh, beneficial for the data sharing and usage. I have seen like we have quite a lot of data that are rich and there's a lot of information there. So maybe we not only just give the data to the user, maybe we could help them to discover what's inside. So actually I give the title is to see the unseen. Because in the information there's something we could discover with our new visualization techniques. I work in uh Peking University on uh, in the uh, school of BCS, so we work on visualization and uh, visual analytics. So uh, briefly we have what uh, more and more data, so uh, the number is changing than before. I said uh, like around 1,000 actual files, so it's data bad, like nowadays, so we can get more. And we have internet, we save more data. So then, <laughs> like facing that, that's that? that? Is oh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we could play, replace maybe uh, <laughs> Professor Liu. So how to uh, deal with such a data set? And we want to have a clever way. So we could have a new user interface. We could have uh, developed more software. I have faster heartbeats when you put feet on such valuable data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Especially with eels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... They should uh, make a correct color here. Okay, so what's the solution? So, there are a lot of solutions. We could have a more powerful computer and we have a more like a better architecture. And then now, I, I know everyone probably, we have seen this uh, movie. And uh, in the movie, we have seen this scenario. We, we, when we look at certain, what we want to make a decision. We want to put all the information into a virtual like uh, sand plate. So we want to put everything in and we can look at, we can find out what's going on and make a decision. So that's the visualization and virtual reality. We go together together with the user interface design. Then we can get more information. Now I would like to introduce very briefly, I will not talk about the details, but just show some results. How we put the temporal and special data together and how to visualize high dimensional data. For example, like that high spectrum data, multiple spectrum, we want to put that together and how to visualize the network data sets. For example, social network, or like a, a hospital, in a hospital actually, all those uh, patients, they have certain relationships. We may want to see how disease, like they propagate from one place to another, there are also a lot of problems to do, uh, try to solve it. So the first one, I just gave one example, we just recently we worked with uh, people from Earthquake. So we have uh, such a visualization system in a lab, and then we put the satellite image and also the earthquake systemic uh, catalog data we put together and then we can say it like uh, for each uh, earthquake event and what happened and then what happened for the satellite we take him before the earthquake <coughs> event and after because there are some hypotheses from the scientists they believe if there are like major earthquakes happening there could be uh, some pattern they could like uh, find out, although it's still ongoing. And uh, even there's a uh, like, special dedicated satellite launched by French called Demeter. And they monitor the ionic density around the atmosphere and then we want to extract this one. So this is a, the, we put all those uh, like uh, global temporal information and the time series of the systemic data together. And together this one we hear we have uh, this uh, kind of like uh, spreadsheet, we compare all those images. And not only directly comparison, we also have a special interface we can observe those uh, multi-dimensional data and then get some ideas like how the correlation between those uh, data sets. And we can also compare multiple uh, events. For example, there's an earthquake in Sichuan and there's another earthquake maybe in uh, Xinjiang problem, and then how, what's the like, behavior, what's the pattern, what's the difference? This is all interesting by the systemic uh, scientists. So actually this system is already like tested by uh, the systemic bureau of the network center. So that's the uh, new one. So uh, 
we put them together, the data is a reasonable size, so around like uh, 60 gigs, and we have uh, record around like uh, 500,000 events historically. We put them together, and then the system is interactive. So the major thing is like how to do the data presentation and how we make it scalable. Um, the result is that we have a such a system, and it's uh, we could uh, interactive like uh, select different channels and then build it here. This is 3D. We can rotate. We can manipulate, and then we can select the time window. And then we can see the difference. And then we can actually check the individual map. This one actually is a combination of uh, those images. And then we use a technique called the parallel coordinates to put like a multi dimensional image, several images together to get one. So actually, this is the kind of similar to uh, the question I asked. So we, we could take a few images and then we can put them together. So, and uh, actually, the we're going to make this software be a public so everyone can use it. Uh, this is a snapshot. So, and we also like make it a, be able to uh, run it in a collaborative visualization. So multiple scientists can do it directly. And how to send the information from one place to another. Or like remotely, we can discuss this one, for example, at Beijing and with another group of people maybe uh, from India, or like from uh, China, or British. Now we could work together. This is the ongoing work, but this is the framework we are working on. And then the another interesting story is like, we also check the um, traffic. Now, yesterday when we go to the restaurant, actually the traffic is pretty heavy. We want to see what's the pattern, what's the behavior. So we collect the uh, traffic around the uh, cross uh, session. And then for the whole day, we have like tens of thousand uh, cars and bicycles go over there. So we have a certain visualization method. This one, we can check each property of the data. And then this one, we can give an overview of the data, like from the early morning until uh, some, uh, sometime later of that day. And then we can see how to categorize of the data, what's the movement. So just uh, a few, two examples, like here, this one, uh, the projected a little problem. So here, it's, uh, yeah, something here. So actually, like this, this way, this is one way. So actually, the car can only go this way, and all can go that way. So we have a certain interface just to show it, like how we collect for the whole day those cars that pass. They violate the traffic rule. So actually, they go from this way. Just look at the, those like the paths. <coughs> they just uh, violate the rules, so we can quickly filter out what, what's the problem and then identify each individual vehicle. This here, we totally we lost the signal. Uh, <laughs> basically, here uh, the story is like uh, some cars they go here. Uh, according to the rule, they can go this way, but uh, this uh, red light, mm -hmm. they cannot go this way. Then some car. Just go this way and make a good thing. So, but use our tool, we can very quickly just fill out for each uh, each day, 24 hours. We can find out there's a one car. They exactly doing this way. So a lot of data, but we could use visualization to quickly identify some individuals, some abnormalities, or like find out some patterns. It's the imagination technique for visualization. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here I have oh. <laughs> yeah. so there are so certain colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then here there's another example. This is a bicycle actually it goes this way. There's a, if you have a chance to look at my computer, there are much rich information. And actually, we found out that the bicycle will cause a lot of problems. Because all the cars are running here, and they take a sneak away and into that heavy traffic flow. So we identify this is a dangerous wagon. And then we can replay it. So that's a visualization. We not only just get a statistic one, you can also replay a single event. So this one, we mainly focus on some event which in time vary. 
And then there's another case is a high dimensional data set. It's a lot of case like we can encounter high dimensional data. For example, each individual we have uh, our identification, <coughs> our like uh, age, uh, female or male, like uh, and uh, where you come from, and uh, your position. They all can be uh, like a high dimensional data set. So another example is uh, like uh, hurricane. So we got uh, hurricane data. This uh, is bad in, uh, in the United States and. Uh, the simulation here, they, they simulate like uh, the cloud and the ice, or like the, the temperature, the pressure. We have so many variables. So normally, it's, uh, we could just see one variable, get a picture, and then how can we see them together? So there's a volume rendering, we could see the three dimensional data set. So like the CT, we can see uh, here the individual CT. And then we can see a 3D image here. It can be repeatable and with our uh, called volume rendering technique. But the important thing is how to get from the, the raw data. And then we want to see a color image. That color image should indicate their property. For example, this is a flow simulation data. And then we can use this one to highlight the vortex. Then we go back to that uh, data set. We have uh, in the face, this uh, each one is a dimension like uh, this uh, temperature, this uh, cloud, this uh, ice. We can identify some part we are interested in. For example, we want to say which part we have a high temperature, which part the cloud percentage is low, and there's more ice over there. Now, as long as we can find out like which part we are interested in, and we do the colorization, and then we can find out what which part that region is in that 3D space. So this is a very like a quick manipulation. I have a video that you can see it here. This is real time, so we can manipulate the data. Then yeah. we found out, identify some feature place. Okay, so this part, we have a low value here, middle right value here, this is a value distribution in this way. And then we can find out if we change the distribution, actually the 3D image, they get kind of different. The key issue here is we make everything interactive. So we can interactively investigate the data, explore the data, and find out some feature we are interested in. For example, here, the user identifies three parts we are interested in. And now we can see it. We can also do some selection in the image space and we will find out whether what's their value distribution. So from both ways, from the result to the raw data, raw data and from raw data to the result. Too much information lost in this projector. Actually, the visualization here will make that uh, transfer from the raw data to the final image, that part will make it very simple. And then now we may not need an expert to do everything. We may like <coughs> some uh, new, new person. He may like uh, participate in and uh, try to uh, find out what's inside. So we can get more people involved. So this is a summer of like uh, for earthquake simulation and uh, you can see how the earthquake will be calculated with the future information. This is uh, other summer UI like here we, we have a flow data and then we can just uh, directly interact with this one with a certain like, brush like. So it's uh, originally we, if we want to set some color we have a very very complicated interface and uh, maybe from the trial and error. Now we want to make it simple. Okay. This is the fish, this is the 
shit. Actually, such a program can just be installed on a, each individual PC. Yes, you can see. This is after the dinner is over. <laughs> okay, so the last part, I'm gonna briefly talk like uh, in the past move, we could uh, show our link data, the social network in the graph, make it much easier for us to understand some complex data sets. For example, we could use a co-authorship. For example, they have a course one paper, we could link it, and then we can find some clusters. And then this is the one, like at Peking University, we have a whole lab for 10 years, and how they collaborate with other institutes. And then we use color to here identify the same data set but we use different color to identify where you're from. For example, this one is all instilled within the campus, so all belong to a Peking University. And then for this one, this is international institute, so outside, outside China. And this one is other university <coughs> in China. Then we can see that like how they collaborate. And then furthermore, uh, I, I don't have a video here, we could also see like within the past 10 years, so how their collaboration like change. So at the beginning, maybe they have more like internal collab collaboration. And then if uh, when the time goes on, like they have more and more international collaboration. And then we can also say like, for example, one data is shared by model people, then they can establish a link. Then we can see how actually how to use it. <coughs> or like, even we also uh, extract the keyword from those uh, like the activities. Mm -hmm. And then we can find out their activity change. For example, maybe at the beginning they focus on game, and then later they focus on some more serious thing. That's uh, something we have uh, invested before, and we have uh, an online version. So actually, we can go there and uh, to get such a map just in Java. Actually, this is not last slide. This is last. We can also do the plot. So this is the blog, like on one blog, we have so many groups and then we can dig in, find out what's going on there, and then we can find each one. Actually the data set is like about the price of the apartment in China. Because it's too high, a lot of people like complain it. And then we use this system to rewrite it. Actually it's, uh, we can find out some, uh, like for example, someone complain it, or someone like, like it, and we, we, for example, the news that come out, and different people have different opinion, and then at different forum, we have a different position, so how to visualize it, and how to uh, explore such data. So finally, we, what can use the visualization to help us make the decision and uh, do the presentation? So I'll just uh, quickly finish this one. i just show a few examples. So if you want to see uh, more, you can to me or like just say on my laptop. So sorry for that to project it. I cannot show a more colorful image, but I hope I can believe with the most of the information. Okay, thank you.